Welcome back. Time for a look at morning sports. Game one of the Western Conference Finals underway last night as Golden State Warriors play host to Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Doncic pulling up for the three in the early Mavericks lead. Andrew Wiggins connects on this three to help the Warriors close the first quarter on 18-5 run and led by 10 after one. Mavs cut that lead down to two after a Reggie Bullock three and the Warriors finished strong. Just before the half, Clay Thompson in transition finds Steph Curry behind the arc for a three and a nine point Warriors lead at the break. In the end, Warriors blow out the Mavs 112-87. Ouch. They play again tomorrow night. Meanwhile, game two of the East Finals between Miami and Milwaukee. Uh, actually, I think it's Miami and Boston is tonight at 730. Let's check that. Yeah, definitely Miami Boston. All right, this Saturday scheduled match at Toyota Field between San Antonio FC and the Colorado Springs Switchbacks. For first place in the United Soccer League Western Conference has been postponed. The reason? COVID. League decision was made for the health and safety of all parties. That's after several individuals from San Antonio FC tested positive. No new date has been announced just yet. Now to baseball. Central Catholic headed the Taps High School Baseball State Semifinals Friday. They'll face Concordia Lutheran to decide who plays for the state championship. The time of their game on Friday has been moved to 7 p.m. Buttons were knocked out of the playoffs last year by Concordia, so they are looking to return the favor. They're a very good team. We know we faced them before. We came up a little short, but uh, we know that they're a very good team and they're not to be taken lightly. We lost to them last year, so you know we're really looking forward to come out this year and. Uh, give them what they gave us last year and move on to the state championship and win that too. They are motivated. All right, out at the Wolf last night, Mish is taking on Midland. No score, bottom of the second, base is full. And for Sui Ruiz, he delivers a blast to center. It's off the wall for a three-run triple. Missions would add another run in the fourth and they win this one for nothing. They did it in style. Four mission pitchers combined to throw for another no hitter. Good signs for our San Antonio missions. Good to see another win. Time now 441 and 72 degrees for now. 3G networks are going away soon and it could mean you'll lose some of your car's safety features. We're going to explain why. And next we're taking on board a massive nuclear armed submarine, the USS Maine. And now to exclusive look on board the nuclear armed submarine, the USS Maine. ABC's Martha Raditz has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look and ABC News exclusive, we're taking you on board a massive nuclear armed ballistic missile submarine. We are aboard the USS Maine, one of only 14 ballistic missile submarines in the U.S. arsenal. This is America's answer to our adversaries' threats. Deterrence is where you can actually have the adversary recognize that he has nothing to gain and everything to lose. The crew trains regularly for the unthinkable scenario, an adversary launching a strategic nuclear attack, and in this simulation, this submarine crew ordered to strike back. And we'll have much more of our exclusive access to the USS Maine coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Martha Raddatz, ABC News. 445 5G is the, of course, new standard for super fast connections for smartphones and other wireless devices. However, as 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris explains, as wireless carriers begin to shut down 3G, millions of cars may lose important safety features. New cars are computers on wheels, and in a lot of cases, it's also a cell phone. Almost every car these days has an internet connection built in, and that can be used for safety features like being able to automatically call for help in a crash, or convenience features like being able to start the car remotely uh, or, or check to see if the doors are locked or unlocked. But for millions of cars on the road today, that technology relies on an aging 3G wireless network. And by the end of this year, all of the major cellular carriers will permanently shut down their 3G networks. Automakers have known for years that the 3G networks were shutting down. But as recently as 2019, they were putting 3G technology into new vehicles, knowing that as soon as the 3G network shut down, that customers would be left in the lurch without access to some of these services. 
Some vehicles already have 4G capability, so you might only have to perform a software update at home, the same way you would on a phone or a laptop, to keep your car's connected services. Others will require a hardware upgrade, and for many car owners, that might come at a cost. But knowing what updates your car may need isn't so easy. Owner's manuals aren't so clear. So if you're not sure, ask your dealer if and when the connected services on your car are set to expire. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Real quick look at TransGuide right now, and we've got a uh, potentially, actually, a now confirmed fatal accident reported here involving one vehicle at this location. This is I-35 at Slotto Creek. Stephen is here monitoring that, and we'll try to get some more information as the morning progresses. And for now, we're going to check in with Justin about what a hot month we've had so far. I, I can't remember a time. I think there's been a few instances where we've had five record highs in a row. I mean, we are putting together a huge streak here. Seven records so far this month, and we've had several days above 100 degrees, and we're forecast to stay above average through Saturday. But notice what we have going on here Sunday and Monday. Some blue color showing up here, and that means we could be below average. In fact, we will be below average Sunday into Monday. So that is what we have to look forward to. We do have to get through a few more days here. We're still running well above average for the month of May, as you might imagine. What's going to help us? Rain chances. Well, that's going to help to cool us down, plus a front. And you look at the rain chances, they are looking better and better. As we get into tomorrow, a 30% chance. Saturday, 30% chance. Same on Sunday. We bring up the rain chances a little bit more Monday and Tuesday as we get into an unsettled weather pattern. It looks like we could see some at least decent rain in spots around South Texas, and that's exactly, exactly what we need. Outside right now, we've got mostly cloudy skies, 73 degrees. Dew point is at 68 south southeast Julie winds at about 9. This is where we were yesterday morning. Low 70s, some 60s in the hill country. Doesn't feel all that bad outside. And we'll see these temperatures jump up pretty quickly. Uh, as we get into, say, midday, we're in the upper 80s. And then by this afternoon, we're forecasting 100 here in San Antonio. Low 100s in several spots. Uh, and, and then normal places that, that see the, the big time heat, especially south and west of San Antonio. As we look at the big picture across the state, we've got heat advisories in places like San Angelo. There's fire danger out across West Texas, severe weather in parts of Oklahoma. So there's a lot going on here. It's been a pretty dire situation when it comes to the drought and gusty winds out west. And so there will be more of that today. But in general, we're beginning to see this pattern shift that is going to be more advantageous for us and not only us, but a large portion of Texas. We've got a little spin in the atmosphere up here that's bringing some storms up across parts of Oklahoma, as we said. And then on the water vapor, we're still watching the swirl out here, this little swirl uh, just south of California. It's finally starting to make its eastward trek towards Texas, and this is what's going to help us get some storms, I think, coming up tomorrow. As far as storms go today, not much there. There could be a few that approach Del Rio and Eagle Pass a little bit later this evening, but I don't think they'll be, uh, it won't be, there won't be a ton of coverage. It, it'll be very, very isolated. As we get into tomorrow morning, clouds come back into play, and then by the afternoon, as that energy comes in, this is just one model, and it shows a few showers and storms. The situation tomorrow is, is one of those where it is all or nothing. We're going to have a pretty decent cap on the atmosphere. If, if the cap can break, then we're going to see some severe weather, I think. If it doesn't break, we may not see anything at all. So that's just the kind of situation we're in. But we need to watch for the threat for a couple strong storms tomorrow afternoon and especially as we get into tomorrow evening. There is a severe weather risk for that. Isolated, it's low end, but it is there. And the hail and gusty winds would be our main threats coming up tomorrow. Not today, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Then we get into the weekend. Still hot on Saturday, 98 degrees, 30% chance of storms as we said. But look at the temperature on Sunday, 82. We got a front coming through, chances of rain. That sounds amazing considering where we've been. 97 Friday, 98 Sunday, there's the 82 Sunday, uh, 84 Monday, 85 Tuesday, and I think Monday and Tuesday, as we discussed earlier, has probably some of our best chances for rain. Bring it on, Mother Nature. That's what I'm saying. 451, about 72 degrees. And coming up next, Chip and Dale are back in a new movie on Disney Plus, and Top Gun Maverick takes over the Cannes Film Festival.
454, Disney's Chip and Dale are back once again as Rescue Rangers. Really, that's what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Chip! Dale, you look different. When you watch the new animated comedy Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, you'll quickly notice that Kiki Lane is one of the only humans in the movie. She's acting alongside a bunch of animated animals, which the If Beale Street Could Talk and Coming to America star tells me brought her back to her early days. You know, even the fact that I was acting by myself, I thought, yeah, that's what I used to do in my bedroom. You know, I take my Barbies and stuffed animals and create a whole new world <laughs> in my bedroom. Like, that's where it starts. Chippendale Rescue Rangers also stars the voices of Andy Samberg and John Mulaney. It's out Friday on Disney+. Plus. Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Top Gun Maverick took over the Cannes Film Festival Wednesday, complete with a flyover by French Air Force fighter jets. The film screened a rave reviews, getting a reported five-minute standing ovation when it was over. It gets a royal premiere today in London, with the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge expected to attend, and you'll get to see it next week. She sang the song 22, and now she's celebrating the class of 22. Taylor Swift giving the commencement speech for NYU's current crop of graduates at Yankee Stadium. And her advice? Catch the good stuff and release the bad. Decide what is yours to hold and let the rest go. Oftentimes, the good things in your life are lighter anyway. Swift, who skipped college, was given an honorary doctorate of fine arts. And from Swift to Sam Smith, the Grammy-winning singer turning 30 today. While singer, dancer, and YouTube star Jojo Siwa is 19. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And Stop the Bleed is a training program to help people learn about bleeding CPR. The one-day event is happening later today. Many people are familiar with CPR to help the heart continue to beat. However, bleeding CPR is for an injury situation when someone is bleeding to death. For more information about this event, you can go to our website at kset.com. 456, about 72 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Wall Street's hoping to make a recovery after its worst one-day drop since 2020. How major retailers are reacting to more inflation. And do you or your kids need a new tablet? We'll tell you about Amazon's new Fire 7 tablet. Ahead in your morning tech bites. And a quick look at the roads with TransSky looking there at that camera there at I-35. That's Lago Creek. Uh, Stephen is keeping on top of this fatal accident. We'll have more for him later on. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, bad news for major retailers thanks to inflation as the Dow suffers its worst one-day drop in two years. And rain on the horizon, not in this shot, but in Justin's forecast. It's looking very encouraging for your front yard and also our local farmers and ranchers. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 19th of May. Good to see you this morning. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to some rain, even if it's just a little bit somewhere. And I'd love to have, it in the end, Justin, somewhere in the neighborhood of two to four inches here or there. So wait, you guys are making specific requests now? Yes, Please. yes, <laughs> yes. Anything under two or over four is going to be a problem. <laughs> okay, got it. We're, we're going to put in the order and we're, we're going to see what we can do here because we do need the rain in the worst way and there is rain in the forecast, which is fantastic. Also some cooler temperatures. It's all looking great. First though, let me show you a great looking picture from our KSAC Connect. Veronica sent this in and this was last night on the bike trails. Man, that is nice. You know, this heat has been pretty brutal. But the evenings aren't horrible, nor the mornings, because, uh, you know, the humidity has been kind of low and it does make for uh, some picturesque sunsets. Thank you, Veronica, for sending that in. Pollen count yesterday, everything was low, like it has been molds and grass. These are probably the two allergens you're going to find in today's count. We'll see uh, where that lands coming up uh, in a couple hours when we get that pollen count in for you. Temperature-wise, 73 New Braunfels, 70 in Rock Springs, 72 Hondo, 73 Pleasanton, and uh, locally around the area, we're in the 60s in Bandera and Comfort, 68 degrees there. Our forecast today, clouds early, and then we'll see plenty of sun, noontime, 88 degrees, and then we're close to 100 this afternoon. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's where we've been last five, six days. The changes are coming, I promise. Some storms tomorrow, and then a cold front on Sunday. 
we time that out for you coming up in just a few minutes. But now it's time to talk to Mr. Stephen Cavazos with the latest on your traffic authority. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Justin. Well, we are keeping our eye on this specific spot here. 35 at Salado Creek. Uh, not a good place right now, especially on the Axis Road. I was just talking to our friends at Transguide. They were able to provide us a shot from this location. Now, although we're not able to get a great shot of it, we can tell you that this is that deadly crash that we mentioned a little bit earlier this morning. We know that it involves one vehicle. We're going to have more details as the morning it does roll on, but let's go ahead and take a look right now at the map because thankfully we're not seeing a buildup of traffic just yet. But keep in mind, drivers, this is off I-35 northbound at Ben Zingelman along the Axis Road. We're going to have more details as morning does go on, but let's go ahead and take a look at the commute and see what else we're spotting. We did notice a crash here off the southwest side near Loop 410 eastbound at Somerset Road. Thankfully, not uh, causing any more issues, but there was there for quite a while, and we did see a slight buildup in those eastbound lanes of 410. Let's go ahead and get a wide view of the metro area at 502 this morning. Lots of green on the screen, but just always remember to take it easy out on the roadways. If your destination is the Alamo City, well, let's take a look at these inbound times. The journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound is a 25 minute drive time. No need to hurry coming in from Bulverde with 27 minutes on 281 southbound and a 26 minute drive time on I-35 southbound if you're heading in from New Braunfels. But this is an area that we are going to have to watch closely. It does look like those flashing lights are still out there. I-35 at Salado Creek. We're going to have more details right here on GMSA. Guys, Michelle, thank you, Stephen. We've got them right now. A woman is dead after she crashed her car on the northeast side, and an argument between two men led to one getting stabbed. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with a wrap of our overnight local stories. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Both of these incidents happening on the city's northeast side, just 15 minutes apart. Let's start with that deadly crash. Five that Stephen just mentioned. A woman was heading northbound on the access road of I-35 at Ben's Engelman just after two this morning when police say her vehicle crashed. Police say she drove off the access road of I-35 and crashed into a drainage ditch. No other vehicles were involved in that crash. When first responders arrived on scene, the woman was already dead. Police say the woman's age and name have not been released at this time. Traffic investigators are still looking into what caused this crash. Now let's head over. Now let's head a little further northeast to Perrin Vital between Loop 410 and Warsbach Parkway to an apartment complex called the Flats. Police say they were called out to the complex at 2:30 this morning. When they arrived, a man in his 20s had a cut to his face and arm. Police say an argument between two men led to one of them being stabbed. The victim was treated by EMS on scene and didn't have to be taken to the hospital. Officers arrested the suspect who is also in his 20s. Police have not released his identity or said what charges he will face. For updates on these stories, just head to ksat.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much. In just over a week, San Antonio has seen three teens shot. Two of those cases ended in death yesterday. Uh, rather, Tuesday, a third teen was shot and rushed to the hospital. She's found near MLK and I-10 on the east side. The shooting comes a week ahead of a crime prevention summit being held by District 2 councilmen. Residents who live in the area say violence like this is nothing new. How often do you think you hear shootings on this part of town? A lot, a lot, like every night, a lot, a lot. It's, it, it got out of God of control. Councilman Jalen McKean Rodriguez plans to address residents questions and concerns May 27th at Second Baptist Church from 6 to 830. There is a questionnaire on the District 2 Council Facebook page where residents can send in their thoughts. We have a link on that to that on ksat.com. A local man already convicted in one robbery is now on trial for capital murder. Prosecutors say Eduardo Torres drove up to a bus stop off of South Presa where 21 year old Nathan Valdez was sitting back in 2016. Now, according to an affidavit, Torres's brother jumped out of the vehicle, robbed and shot Valdez, and then the two sped off. If Torres is found guilty, he is facing life in prison without the possibility of parole. His brother is awaiting sentencing in the case. A shakeup for local school district. Last night, the South San ISD Board of Trustees voted 3-2 to two to notify Superintendent Mark Puig of his termination effective immediately. He's been on paid administrative leave since December. Also, after 25 years, Board of Trustees Connie Prado is stepping down for a second time. She made a similar announcement back in 2020, but ultimately decided to stay. The board has seen several instances of contention with incoming supers and has even had to undergo meetings with the Texas Education Agency. Prado's last day will be June 30th. It's not clear who will take her seat. 
San Antonio's International Airport will see some changes soon. The city has announced a third terminal will be constructed. The plan is to complete it by 2028. Along with the terminal, a parking garage and ground transportation center are also expected to be built by that time. It should be able to handle passenger needs over the next 20 years. Well, after a brutal day on Wall Street, stocks are all but guaranteed to finish down for a sixth straight week. The market's turmoil is being fueled by high inflation and plenty of uncertainty. Here's ABC's Rihanna Alley. The wild ride on Wall Street this week may be hurting your 401k, but consider this. The Waltons, the family behind Walmart, just lost $34 billion in just two days. The Dow Wednesday suffered its worst one-day drop since 2020, and major retailers took the biggest hit. Walmart stock sliding 17 percent, and Target down 24 percent. Both say higher expenses are eating into their profits. They're struggling to maintain their profitability in the face of very high costs. But Home Depot offered a different perspective, showing a strong quarter as the home improvement industry remains hot. Many of the company's customers are home builders and contractors. We'll get more clues about consumer spending later today when BJ's, Kohl's and manufacturing company Applied Materials release their earnings. With the cost of just about everything rising, experts are mixed on whether we're headed towards a recession. On the one hand, we have a very strong job picture right now. There are more, far more job openings, a record number of job openings versus the number of unemployed. But inflation is deeply embedded in our economy right now. Rents are higher. Groceries are higher. Gasoline is higher. Across the board, it's higher and wages aren't keeping up. A survey of more than 130 CEOs found more than half believe the U.S. will face a mild recession. Other analysts predict a significant recession. But I don't think stocks are headed uh, much further south uh, unless the economy is going into recession. And I just don't see that at this point. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. It's now 509 on your Thursday morning. And still ahead, why more long term Netflix subscribers are canceling their subscriptions. Plus, how County Judge Nelson Wolf is looking to provide some tax relief to Bear County property owners. And taking a look outside with live cam, hoping for some relief from this heat we've had all week. We're at 72 degrees for now, and we'll be checking in with Justin with that possibility very soon. Welcome back to 512. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says more tax relief is on the way for Bear County property owners. During his State of the County address, Wolf said the county would look at expanding the county's homestead exemption. It was only put on the books two months ago. He's also looking at cutting the tax rate. However, he told reporters after his speech that some changes may not take effect until next year. But we will be responsible and we will um, make sure we don't take advantage of people that have had their appraisals go up without any... Uh, you know, any authority to say yes or no if their customers. And Judge Wolf is not running for re-election for the first time in decades. Several candidates are vying for his position. Some of them are in a runoff right now. 513, 72 degrees. And still ahead, Amazon announces the latest version of its Fire 7 tablet. We're going to tell you about its lower price point. Ready to become an IT professional? How Apple is getting ready to train and certify new workers. So who climbs ladders to clean their gutters? Dad, I keep telling you it's dangerous. Climbing ladders is too dangerous. Leaf Filter puts an end to that. So how does it work? Leaf Filter's three-piece system filters out leaves and debris, letting water flow through freely. Do we need to replace our gutters? Great question. Leaf Filter could be installed right on top of your existing gutters. We're sold. Call 833-LEAF-FILTER or go to getleaffilter.com for your free gutter inspection and estimate. You won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So trees, you won't take me down. When allergies attack, take Allegra. Before your symptoms take over you. Live your greatness. Pre-rinsing your dishes? You could be using the wrong detergent and wasting up to 20 gallons of water. Skip the rinse with Finish Quantum. Its Active Lift technology provides an unbeatable clean on 24-hour dried-on stains. Skip the rinse with Finish to save our water. 
In today's Tech Bites, Netflix is losing more of its long-term subscribers. Data shows subscribers who have been with the service for more than three years accounted for 13% of cancellations in the first quarter of 2022, and overall cancellations jumped to 3.6 million. Amazon is out with a new version of its Fire 7 tablet. The company says it comes with battery life that's 40% longer and USB-C charging. It comes in black, denim, and rose and costs about 60 bucks. It will begin shipping in June. Finally, Apple is now offering training to become an IT professional. The company says completing the two courses should take about 27 hours. There's also a certification exam. Participants will learn how to deploy, manage, and support Apple devices in the workplace. Orange, you glad there's no Apple joke today? Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> he's kind of there. Yeah, Andrew's back. I don't know. I'm. Uh, yeah, he's uh, okay. Be for effort. Uh, Five seventeen, about seventy-two degrees. Let's go ahead and check with Stephen Cabasas about the accident that he's been following all morning. That's right, uh, Mark Stephanie. We've been talking about this for a little while. Sarah Costa mentioned some details a little bit earlier, but we are still seeing some first responders out there, and they do have the access road at I thirty-five at Salado Creek, exit one sixty-one, blocked at this time. Now that's because of a deadly crash that occurred just after two this morning. We know that it involved one vehicle and unfortunately one woman did die from her injuries. We will have more details as the morning does go on, but let's see if it's really impacting traffic right now because uh, the good news is for drivers that are heading in those northbound lanes of I-35, we're not detecting any slowdowns just yet. But again, we want to encourage you just be mindful that exit is going to be close as first responders are working to clear everything up. Let's get a wide look at the map right now as we get this morning going here. 518 not seeing anything else that's really causing any concerns again, just to that issue over off I-35 near Ben's Engelman. We have the shot from Salado Creek right now, but you can see the metro area is looking just fine. And as we get one last look here, 35 at Salado, we're going to have to watch it pretty closely and let you know how that impacts the morning drive time, guys. Thank you, Stephen. All right, Justin Horn, kind of put things into perspective for us yet again. Yeah, I know. It feels like we're doing this every day. The National <laughs> Weather Service put out some, some good stats yesterday. They talked about the fact that last year, we only saw three days in which we hit 100, and they were all in September. So with that in mind, it's pretty incredible that so far this year we've already had four, and they've all been in May. San Antonio averages about 18 100-degree days per year, just to keep it in perspective for you. So we are a little bit ahead of schedule here. I think these triple digits come to an end, uh, especially by the time we get into Sunday. We, we'll say goodbye to these, these uh, big numbers, and uh, we'll get a nice cool down. In the meantime, we've got mostly cloudy skies this morning, and temperatures are sitting in the 70s still. We're at uh, 73 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at about 11 miles per hour. Dew point is at 68. And temperatures generally in the 70s around the area. Uh, 72, Hondo 71 in Uvalde, 75 Katua. You will find 60s in the higher elevation, 68 Bandera, 68 right now in comfort. Here is the KSAT 12 hour forecast for planning out your day. Mostly cloudy this morning, but uh, basically status quo. Noontime, close to 90, mostly sunny this afternoon. And we're around 100 yet again. So you're asking yourself, when? When is this heat going to end? Well, we think. Uh, it'll still be around tomorrow and Saturday, but the, the changes we have coming up tomorrow and Saturday are in the form of some rain. We're going to put some rain chances in the forecast. Then, as we get into Sunday, that's when we start to see the bigger changes. As of right now, any sort of rain, thunderstorm activity, that's all up across parts of Oklahoma and North Texas, and that's moving away. But we are still watching a little bit of a circulation in the atmosphere out here over California. This is the first disturbance that will make it here by tomorrow. Now, there's some questions surrounding this. Uh, the question will be, will the cap hold tomorrow and will that keep storms from developing? Uh, and that's still a question we may have to look into as we get into tomorrow. But I think there is still a chance for some storms tomorrow afternoon. Today, nothing. If we see anything, it's going to be out west and probably staying in Mexico. Tomorrow morning, clouds develop early. And then as that piece of energy comes in, this particular model does put out some showers and maybe a few storms tomorrow evening. If we do see storms, there is a high likelihood they would become strong to severe. So that is something to watch tomorrow evening. Rain chances are still low, but uh, there is a threat there for some severe weather. And you look from the, at the Storm Prediction Center, and they are putting out an isolated risk of severe weather coming up tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And it basically includes most of the area. Hail, gusty winds will be your main threats if we do see that severe weather uh, develop. 
Then as we get into the weekend, it's still hot on Saturday, but by Sunday, this is Sunday at 5 o'clock, that cold front slides through, and the numbers behind it are pretty impressive considering where we've been. Highs in the 70s and 80s Sunday afternoon behind this front. Not only that, it's, it's sort of a slow-moving front, so we may see more showers and storms develop along the front, which is just a bonus at this point. So 100 today, 97 tomorrow, 98 Saturday. We do have the 20% chance of rain both days, or 30% chance, I should say. And then a 30% chance coming up on Sunday. We up the rain chances Monday and Tuesday, 40% chance. It's looking increasingly likely that we'll see some important rain around the area, but it's, it's hard to pinpoint where exactly it's just nice to know that it is back in the forecast. Oh, wow. Yeah, unbelievable. And across so many days, too, helps a lot, doesn't it? It, it does. And the temperatures, especially next week with the clouds and the rain in the 80s, that's exactly what we need. Not a drought buster, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to help a little. It should. Yeah. It should. And we'll see where some of that heavy rain falls, hopefully in areas that desperately need it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Nice okay. to see that and the 80s. Good news. Yes. 523, 72 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Taylor Swift receives an honorary doctorate degree, plus a first look at Netflix's Jennifer Lopez documentary. Your pick three numbers, 203, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 8884, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 20, 21, 26, 27, 28. Lotto, Texas, 4, 27, 29, 30, 40, 53. And your Powerball numbers, 40, 41, 58, 64, 65, Powerball 17, Power Play 3. Good luck. Taylor Swift is now a doctor, plus a look at a new Jennifer Lopez documentary. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa. You can now call her Dr. Taylor Swift. The pop star received an honorary doctorate in fine arts from New York University at a commencement ceremony held in Yankee Stadium. I'd like to thank NYU for making me technically, on paper at least, a doctor. <laughs> Not the type of doctor you would want around in case of an emergency. Unless your specific emergency was that you desperately needed to hear a song with a catchy hook and an intensely cathartic bridge section. I've lived in the public eye. A brand new trailer is giving us our first look at Netflix's new Jennifer Lopez documentary, Halftime. It was hard. I just had a very low self-esteem to really figure out who I was. The film, which begins streaming next month, offers an intimate behind the scenes look at J-Lo's life and career. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Right now it's 527. And still ahead on GMSA, the House passed two bills to help with the baby formula shortage last night. We're gonna tell you what that means for most new parents. Plus, look inside the all-new real-life amphitheater that is set to, to be revamped and help revamp the San Antonio music scene. Plus, why some businesses and restaurants could soon be charging you extra fees if you use a Visa or MasterCard. Making headlines this morning as parents struggle to feed their infants due to the formula shortage. Criticism now growing about why lawmakers did not act months ago. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 72 degrees and we're looking forward to some relief in the next few days. Oh yeah, hang on folks, just a little while longer. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, it is May 19th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been pretty hot and we've like broke records almost every day, Justin. Five days in a row now we've broken records. I, I don't know that we'll break another record today, but we're forecast to be up around 100 and the record high is 101. So. The yellow number there represents the record. That number represents the forecast high. So we're going 100 here in San Antonio, which would be just one degree shy of the record. No matter how you look at it, this is more extreme heat for us. Places like San Angelo forecasting to be up around 107 today. Their record is 108, so they may get there. A lot of places in Texas really baking. We need some changes, and I do think they're headed our way. Here's what you need to know. Triple digits again today, but evening storms start to pop up tomorrow. It's still hot on Friday, but by the weekend, we get a frontal boundary. That brings chances of rain, and it cools us down. 
and you're going to love those temperatures next week. Temperatures right now, 73 in New Braunfels, 73 Gonzales, 72 Honda, some 60s in the Hill Country. Uh, like yesterday, not a bad start, but it is going to warm up very quickly and we'll be around 77 by 9 a.m. 88 noontime, mostly sunny, and you'll get that southerly breeze anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. And there's your high temperature right around 5 o'clock as it typically is. 100 degrees today. I can promise you some relief. We've got some better rain chances. We've upped our rain chances just a little bit. We're going to discuss all of it here in just a few minutes, but I know Stephen's got a few pressing matters at this hour. Let's check in with the latest there. Thanks, Justin. Uh, well, let's get a look 35 at Salado Creek. If you're just tuning in with us, we are keeping track of this deadly crash. It happened earlier in the morning. You can see flashing lights still right behind me. That is the access road that is closed off there. Uh, we do understand that this involved one vehicle. We're going to get to more details uh, in just a moment, but there you can see 35 again, Salado Creek, that area blocked off. Now where we have that pinpointed on our map is over here off of the northbound lanes near Ben's Engelman Road. So you can see that our map has also picked up that icon indicating that there is a closure in that area. It's a spot we're going to have to watch closely as the morning does roll on, but we're not seeing any congestion that's building up just yet. But drivers keep in mind it is still an early morning. 533, let's get a wide look at the map. We also are seeing another crash that just popped up what appears to be off of State Highway 151 over on the west side of San Antonio. Looks like it just cleared from our map, so hopefully that's some good news, but uh, we're still not seeing any good news here off 35 at Salado Creek. Our Katrina Weber is live there on the ground. Katrina How's it looking out there? Well, good morning, Stephen. Just as you said, no real congestion, but we do still have the scene going on. It's over there in the distance. Uh, police are keeping us back because they're working there, uh, but they do tell us that it looks like they should be able to clear this up pretty soon. Now, I want to try to give you a better look with the video that we have uh, since we're not able to get very close up. Uh, this happened about 2.15 this morning. Police tell us there was a woman who was driving on the highway on I-35. For some reason, her car left the highway and landed in a ditch below. The woman was killed. And again, police have been here investigating this crash ever since. They have this northbound access road shut down. Uh, this is in the area of Ben's Engelman. But we did see a tow truck arrive just a little while ago. Uh, police tell us that they are trying to make sure that all of that debris is cleared up so that they can reopen this access road. Not much of an impact on the main lanes of the highway, just the access road closed for now, but according to police, it may not be much longer. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Stephen and Katrina, thank you for the updates. Well, the government is taking more steps to address the baby formula shortage. Two bills heading to the Senate after passing in the House late last night. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on the measures and the criticism that lawmakers should have acted sooner. As desperate parents struggle to feed their babies, the government is taking more action to help. When I get to work in the morning, I look for formula. When we're finally sitting on the couch for an hour at night, we're looking for formula. Your mind doesn't stop thinking about it, especially at night. These bills are heading to the Senate after passing in the House late last night. This plan to help low-income families use their WIC benefits for formula has strong bipartisan support. Those families purchase about half the formula in the U.S. and they're limited to certain brands. If we can't find it in the stores, then we lose our benefits. The second bill would pay for more FDA inspectors at formula plants. Only 12 Republican representatives voted for it, so its future in the Senate is uncertain. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden says he's invoking the Defense Production Act to help formula makers get ingredients more quickly. And he's sending planes overseas to pick up infant formula that meets U.S. health and safety standards so we can get it on the store shelves faster. Criticism is growing about how long these actions took. The formula plant at the heart of a nationwide recall shut down in February. This is serious. This is unacceptable. This is a basic need for babies. Something has to be done right now. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Russian military says more Ukrainian fighters who were making a last stand at that steel plant in Mariupol have surrendered or being held at a pre-trial detention center. Russian Foreign Ministry says more than a thousand Ukrainian soldiers have laid there their arms at that steel plant since May 16th. The Ukrainian side has not given an update on the number who have left the plant nor on the status of negotiations for their exchange were for Russian prisoners. Meanwhile, the first captured Russian soldier to be put on trial in Ukraine for war crimes 
these charges, pleaded guilty Wednesday to killing a civilian and could get life in prison. U.S. cybersecurity officials are ordering all federal civilian agencies to fix flaws in a widely used software. The software made by VMware has a vulnerability that may allow hackers to remotely access computer files. The emergency directive gives agencies five days to either update the software or remove it from their computer networks. VMware issued a fix for the software on April 6, but not all users have updated their computers. The U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency wants to avoid another national incident like the SolarWinds hack. President Biden spent most of the day yesterday with key Democratic senators to discuss the issue of student loan debt. Biden has repeatedly paused federal student loan repayments now extended through August 31st. Now, some senators have called for the cancellation of up to $50,000 of student loan debt per borrower. The White House has indicated the president would support congressional action to eliminate up to $10,000 worth. But the Democrats slim majority in Congress, President Biden may have to rely on an executive order to actually take action. Time now, 537 and 72 degrees for now. Still ahead, while your purchases at your favorite stores or even restaurants might go up if you use Visa or MasterCard credit or debit cards. Also up next, we're going to take you on a special tour of the revamped real-life amphitheater in Selma. Gosh, I haven't been out there in many, many years. Good to see it back outside with live cam looking back towards beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. You're waking up with GMSA. 540, the San Antonio music scene is about to hit another high note. The real life amphitheater in Selma is set to reopen Sunday after being closed years to major concerts. RJ Marcus got a sneak peek of the venue of that was what's known as the Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. You can call it a real life rebirth. Years after it closed, the real life amphitheater in Selma is finally ready to host larger concerts. We acquired this property years ago and just recognized that this was beyond us. Sean Azaro is the pastor of River City Community Church, which brought the property in 2011. This was more than just a church home that we wanted to offer this property as a gift really to the communities. But the venue was in a state of disrepair. Azaro and the team, including general manager George Ebarb, worked to upgrade and maintain it. Boost the Wi-Fi, run new cabling, redo the stage, uh, and then we started the journey in the process of putting seats back inside this amphitheater. The acoustics are fantastic on the hill. That is a great place to enjoy a concert. The real life amphitheater will seat 20,000 people for live events and shows, and that includes 8,000 people under the roof here at the amphitheater and 12,000 more outside on the lawn. And now this becomes the second largest live entertainment venue here in the San Antonio area. We are one of the largest cities in the country that didn't have an operating outdoor amphitheater of this size. Aaron Zimmerman with the Tobin Center says the amphitheater represents more options for entertainers that would otherwise not stop in our area. More options is better for the people of San Antonio and allows different types of arts to be presented in different places. The first big show is Sunday's Zac Brown Band concert, but it's just the beginning. Festivals, uh, we can do wine tasting events. Uh, there's just amazing amount of things that we can do. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, some of us were just reminiscing about some great shows we'd seen out there. It used to be Verizon Wireless, but it's good to have it back. Yeah, and uh, 8,000 seats. Wow. Yeah, wow. seats up to 20. Wow. Yes. Sit on the hill. There's a nice breeze. Oh, yeah. 542, about 72 degrees. And coming up next, ready for a new pet. We have one standing by, thanks to the San Antonio Humane Society. Standing by or jumping on you. Either way. Either one. Well, if you need somebody that's going to give you a run for your money and literally a good running partner, it's probably going to be mochi? this little boy here. Kim's here from the uh, San Antonio Humane <laughs> Society. Who's this guy? This is Mochi. Uh, mochi is a 10-month-old shepherd mix um, who, yes, definitely is yeah. going to be a great running buddy, going to want to be outside, um, going to get bigger than this, but 10-month-old. Yeah, and he's just got that look in his eyes. Yes. i got to go. I've got to run. So put him in the backyard with tennis ball yes. and the kids, and they're going to get go. all a good workout. But, yeah, he will make a great, great pet, but he's going to need a lot of exercise. <laughs> yes. And rambunctious, and he loves his treats there. And just he as does. sweet as can be, He too. is very sweet. I mean, very yes. gentle, kind. Earlier, he was laying maybe, down. Maybe a couple almost. lessons as to not to jump up. Jump like up, that, but yeah. 
still, sweet as can be. Mochi. Sit. What you got going on? So you're talking about running in summer, mm -hmm. and it's definitely we're in the summer months, and so we want to make sure that we keep our pets safe during the summertime. So make sure that if you're going to do running or walking, it's early in the morning, it's not midday. Same thing if you're going to be outside and you want to play with a in the water with a water hose, test the water hose, turn it on because the water in there is hot. Yeah. So just keep our pets safe. Don't keep leave them in the cars. Um, yeah. So. And think about the pavement too. If you were exactly. walking on the pavement in your bare feet, mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't be able to you. go two steps. Same exactly. thing with dogs. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Exactly. All so. right. Good tips. And if you'd like more on Mochi, yeah, he's going to be a good, yes, hi, <laughs> good boy. Head on over to the uh, San Antonio yeah. Humane Society yeah. at 4804 Fredericksburg Road. You're Give him so a call, 226 7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. In your morning consumer headlines, Wingstop might cut out the middleman to lower its food supply cost. The company is considering raising its own chickens. The Wingstop CFO told investors that they might buy a small poultry complex or build their own. The company estimates that one poultry plant could provide about 20% of its overall wing purchases. Building the operation would be costly, but the company thinks it could help them avoid sudden spikes in chicken costs. Businesses are blaming credit and debit cards for higher prices at some stores. Credit card giants Visa and MasterCard raised their interchange rates, also called swipe fees, last month. Merchants pay the fees to banks and credit card companies for transactions made with credit or debit cards. Some retailers say the increased fees will force them to raise prices on consumers or stop accepting certain credit cards at all. Visa and MasterCard claim the fees help pay for rewards programs and banking service and guarantee payment in cases of customer overdraft or fraud. And here's a look at McDonald's new chocolatey pretzel McFlurry. And Ooh. it goes on sale May 25th next week. It's made with vanilla soft serve ice cream with chocolate covered pretzel bits topped with a caramel swirl. Fancy. The company calls it the perfect combination of salty and sweet. So it's the second sweet eat added to the menu recently. The glazed pull apart donuts went on sale earlier this month. And of course, this is all contingent if the ice cream machine is actually working when you get there. Oh, uh, there's the catch. Yeah. There's the catch. All right. Do better, McDonald's. Right now, 548, about 72 degrees. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, that looked pretty good. I mean, yeah. I was just thinking that they could add some caffeine to that. Is that too much? No, it's no, not. It's not. Like, oh, okay. okay, well, let's let's talk later. <laughs> All right. Uh, but right now, traffic has been off to a pretty decent start around town. We're going to take our eyes and, and kind of just focus on what's happening elsewhere. We know 35 at Salado Creek is still a major issue. As you can see, first responders are still out there. 410 at Marbach. But everywhere else looks pretty fine as we're inching closer to that 6 a.m. hour. There's an I-10 at Presa looking like an I Love Lucy episode there. But let's go ahead and bring it right to the map because the issue that is the main issue this morning, uh, pardon me, is the main problem, I-35 northbound at Ben's Engelman Road, where we do have that deadly crash that was reported earlier this morning. Now, Katrina Weber is live out there, and we did see first responders are still working to clear this up. Drivers, keep in mind, this is along the Axis Road, so you will see that closure at 161. We'll work and monitor that throughout the morning. Again, wide look at the map, still off to a quiet start, uh, but plan your commute. Just as a quick reminder, over off I-35 on the northeast side, we've been telling you about this all week. Geotechnical and drilling work will be current up until tomorrow, 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. Drivers, that's when you're going to see a single lane closure on the northbound frontage road from Pat Booker Road to Form Parkway. So uh, that will be planned for later this morning. But as of right now, the morning is off to a decent start elsewhere around town. But we have to keep our eyes on that unfortunate incident that happened off of 35 near Ben Zingelman, guys. Thank you for the update, mm -hmm. Steve. And Justin joined us now. Justin, correct me if I'm wrong. I know we've been super hot lately, but at least the, mm -hmm. the humidity has not been just crushing us. True. This is true. It's been drier in the afternoon, so that's a good thing. Let me test your memories real quick. Uh -oh. Okay. When's the last time we saw at least an inch of rain in San Antonio at the airport? 2018. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not far off. Last, last year. La last what? month? I'm uh, saying last year. February. Oh, it's been oh, since wow. February that we've had that kind of rainfall at the airports. We need some just some good, solid, steady rain. There is some in the forecast. At least we're going to see some downpours, I think, and that could help a lot. Right now, we've got 73 degrees. Dew point is at 68, and this number is, as Mark said, it falls off during the afternoon. So it's, it has been, has been a dry heat and it will be again today. 72 degrees, Hondo 73 down there in Pleasanton, 73 Canyon Lake, 73 in New Braunfels, some 60s as you get into Kendall County this morning. Forecast temperatures. We rebound pretty quickly this morning, and then we make it into the upper 80s, close to 90 by noontime. We're forecasting 100 here in San Antonio today. We got up to 101 yesterday. No reason to believe we won't 
be right back in that range again this afternoon. The record is 101, so we may not break a record today, but we're going to get close. And there's going to be a lot of spots in Texas that get awful close to some record heat. Places like San Angelo forecast to be up around 107 today. There's heat advisories in effect there, and then you have a high fire danger out west. Humidity is low enough. You get some gusty winds and as hot as it, as it has been, you still have the fire danger out there in West Texas. Radar and satellite shows there is a little bit of rain up across parts of the DFW area. Then you get into Oklahoma. There's there has been some severe weather uh, this morning. Water vapor imagery shows that we still have that twist to the atmosphere we showed you yesterday down here around California. It's starting to turn a corner and it works its way towards Texas coming up tomorrow. So then the big, big question becomes, is that enough to break what will be a pretty significant cap on the atmosphere? The cap, remember, is like a lid, keeps storms from developing. Will that be enough to get some storms going tomorrow? I think it will. The forecast today is a quiet one. This is 7 o'clock this evening. Not much there, but as we get into tomorrow, as that energy comes in, I think we'll see some showers and uh, some storms developing. Now, if we do get storms to develop, there is a likelihood that they would become strong to severe. And that time frame is sometime tomorrow evening and something we certainly need to watch. Hail and gusty winds would be the main threats. And the Storm Prediction Center has put us in an isolated risk for severe weather tomorrow. That's if we get the storms. Of course, that is the big if, right? Uh, I will certainly keep you posted there as uh, I know a lot of people have Friday evening plans. You probably have some weekend plans too. Keep in mind there will be some chances of rain during the day on Saturday. Still hot, 98 degrees. Chances of rain during the day on Sunday, 30%. But it's cooler, 82, the forecast high on Sunday. What a change thanks to a frontal boundary. And behind that, we'll see temperatures in the 80s much of next week with even better chances for rain. Monday and Tuesday, we've got a 40% chance in there, which is exciting. At least I think so. I, we detect happiness in your voice or, or relief. Yes. I'm super, I'm super stoked about it. Well, you know, there's a couple of things. Yet. You know, I'm a money guy, right? So lower energy bills, water bills. Right. It's true. All it's that. good. It's all going to help. Helpful. It's all it will good. all help. Yeah. I see, we see the big picture now. Thank yeah. you, Justin. You got it. Right now, 553, about 72 degrees. And here's a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, two, zero, three, fireball two, daily four, eight, 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 four, fireball one. Cash five numbers, 20, 21, 26, 27, 28, lotto Texas, if you're just now waking up, four, 27, 29, 30, 40, 53. And Powerball last night, 40, 41, 58, 64, 65, Powerball 17, power play three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the big steps from President Biden to speed up the production of baby formula when it could finally help ease the nationwide shortage. Plus, a new FTC warning this morning about baby formula scammers. They're charging desperate parents sky high prices for formula that never arrives. Also, the turbulence on Wall Street, stocks plunging. What is behind that and what it means for your wallet? That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. All right. Coming up right here on GMSA, we will have the very latest on a couple of situations uh, going on here. Uh, distracted parenting. I, I know I seem distracted right now, but we're talking about screen time, not only for your kids, but also for you. That's coming up on GMSA. And checking Transguide right now, Steve will have an update on what's been a fatality accident scene working for quite a while. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto, and I'm among some of the bravest and finest heroes in our country that are getting ready to board a flight to Washington, D.C. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you everything about this flight, this trip of a lifetime. San Antonio police have been investigating the death of a woman this morning on I-35. We'll have the very latest. And taking a look outside with live cam, we've had record breaking heat all week. Today's going to be another hot day. However, we are looking forward to some changes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, May 19th. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Justin is here this morning. He's very excited about the changes 
that are coming. We don't want to give it all away, but it's going to be a lot cooler and we're going to get a ton of rain. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much sums it up. I did it on anyway. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, we, we are, I'm, oh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped about it. It is such a nice change because May has been so brutal to us. Yesterday was no different. We got up to 101 here in San Antonio. Another record, fifth day in a row. These records just keep falling. 100 New Braunfels yesterday, 103 Hondo, 103 in Uvalde. You get the idea. And yes, we'll be right back there again today. We're expecting triple digits here in San Antonio. But those, those uh, relief, those signs of relief, they're not far away. They're not far away. We're, we're talking a couple days here. Pollen count, everything's low, molds and grass. We expect that that'll be the case again today. Temperatures right now, 73 degrees at the airport, 69 Fredericksburg, 72 Junction, 73 down there in Pleasant, and mainly 70s here across San Antonio this morning. And the forecast for today, the case at 12 hour forecast, 10 a.m., 81 degrees. By noontime, we're at 88, 92 by 1 o'clock, and it is going to be a hot afternoon. 100, the forecast high, good southerly breeze, which helps a little bit. We're going to talk rain chances. We have brought rain chances up, especially as we get into next week. We'll time that out for you. Talk about the threat for a few severe storms, too. That's coming up in just a few minutes, but Stephen now with the latest on your morning commute. Thank you, Justin. Well, we have been watching this area closely throughout the morning 35 at Salado Creek. Let's get a wider view from Transguide, and you can see the only difference that we're spotting now is that those flashing lights that had been there for quite a while blocking that exit have now gone out. We're not seeing those first responders from this shot at Transguide, but we do know that there was a deadly crash that occurred along the access roads in those northbound lanes. Now, we hadn't really been spotting a buildup in that direction there along Ben's Ingle Road where it was reported earlier. Uh, I know keep in mind now this was along the axis road, so no buildup just yet. But just because we saw those flashing lights out there, we're not so clear if that scene has officially been wrapped up there. But we're going to get to that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and get a wide look at the map right now. 602. The metro area is looking just fine, but is this area looking a little bit better from this shot at Transguide? It is, but let's go ahead and talk to Katrina Weber, who's been live there throughout the morning. Katrina, what's it looking like now? Well, good morning, Stephen. It looks like as if nothing happened. This access road is open as of about five minutes ago, so traffic starting to move here on the access road. The scene of the crash was way off in the distance over there by that bridge, uh, and that was about 2.15 this morning is when it happened. Let me give you a look at some video so you can see what they were dealing with out here. A police told us it looks as though it was just a one-car crash. For some reason, a driver who was headed north on I-35 left the highway and landed in a ditch below. That woman was killed. A police uh, investigated the crash. We don't know yet what caused that woman to drive off the highway, but police did say it looks as though she was the only one involved in the crash from what they could see. And again, this access road had been closed for hours, but as of about five minutes ago or so, it is now open and traffic back to normal. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. A gas station on San Antonio's northwest side forced to close after a carbon dioxide leak, potentially from the store's soda machines, and a man is stabbed after an argument. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the latest on our overnight stories. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. And you said it right. It's carbon dioxide leak, not a carbon monoxide leak, which potentially could be dangerous, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, let's head over the city's northeast side where one man was stabbed. SAPD was called out to Perrin Beidel between Loop 410 and Warsbach Parkway to an apartment complex called The Flats. Officers say they were called out to the complex at 2.30 this morning. When they arrived, a man in his 20s had a cut to his face and arm. Police say an argument between two men led to one of them being stabbed. The victim was treated by EMS on scene and didn't have to be taken to the hospital. Officers arrested the suspect, who is also in his 20s. Police have not released his identity, and if charged, he could face assault with a deadly weapon. Now let's get back to that carbon dioxide leak. This happening at a quick trip in Leon Valley on Bandera near Grissom Road at 1145 last night. Leon Valley fi firefighters say a special alarm for carbon dioxide leaks went off inside the store and the store clerk called 911. No one else was inside the store when it happened. The clerk was checked out by EMS after she complained of feeling sick. She was okay and not taken to the hospital. Now, firefighters say they couldn't find a leak and a technician who specifically fixes carbon dioxide leaks had to be called out. The store has been closed until that leak is fixed. 
Now, carbon dioxide leaks can happen when there are large canisters of it for soda machines, and if too much gets in the air, it can actually be harmful. Firefighters are still investigating what caused this specific leak. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, suspected robbers are still on the loose and Crime Stoppers is asking you to help get them off the streets. So take a look. Crime Stoppers released these images of the suspects. They say one of the suspects pulled a gun and used it on a man inside the Tobin parking garage on West Park Avenue last week. The victim was shot but was able to escape. Anyone with any information on the case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. The number is on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could get up to $5,000 for your tip that leads to any arrest. In top stories this morning, a convicted robber now on trial for capital murder. Prosecutors say Eduardo Torres drove up to a bus stop off of South Presa where 21 year old Nathan Valdez was sitting back in 2016. According to the affidavit, Torres's brother jumped out of the vehicle, robbed and shot Valdez, and then the two sped off. If Torres is found guilty, he is facing life in prison without the possibility of parole. His brother is awaiting sentencing in the case. New COVID-19 cases are at their highest point since mid-February. A new projection estimates a spike in both hospitalizations and deaths over the next few weeks. Already hospitals under increasing pressure as the White House calls for new COVID funding. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. This morning, COVID-19 cases climbing across the country. Hospitalizations are up more than 60% in the last month. A new projection shows daily hospital admissions will continue rising in nearly every state over the next four weeks, forecasting about 5,300 more deaths to occur over the next two. New York and California among the states projected to see the largest death tolls. The CDC again recommending Americans to wear masks indoors. In areas where community levels are high, everyone should be using prevention measures and wearing a mask in public indoor settings. In Washington, the White House is urging Congress to act. Without new COVID-19 funding, Americans may be left vulnerable to the virus. We will not be able to buy enough vaccines for every American who wants one. We will find ourselves in the fall or winter uh, with people getting infected and no treatments available for them because we will have run out. And today, the CDC is expected to authorize Pfizer's booster shots for children 5 to 11 years old. To have the booster is just an extra level of assurance. This comes as new child COVID infections are at their highest point since February. Still, less than 30 percent of children between 5 and 11 have been fully vaccinated and thus are eligible for a booster. The CDC says it's in talks with the FDA about making the second booster that's already open to people 50 years and older available to a wider age group. M1, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home and on a lighter note this morning, we want to introduce you to a pair of SeaWorld trainers who share a special bond. Max Massey has the story. 21-year-old twins Jacob and Weston Fenton do everything together. And they knew from a young age, they wanted to make a difference by being trainers at SeaWorld. We started coming here ever since we were super young. When we were seven years old, our parents, they brought us to SeaWorld camp and that's where we fell in love with these animals. The relationships that they have with their trainers and we knew from that day that this is what we wanted to do for the rest of our lives. Since this duo is inseparable, it's no surprise how they got the news, they got the job at SeaWorld. I think what will always be such a moment that I'll remember is when we first got hired together on the same day and just the start of this journey was something I'll never forget. The same day. The same, same day, day, same hour. <laughs> <laughs> they gave, I got my call and they were like, okay, your brother got it too. Just like give us wow. 10 minutes to call. And when it comes to the relationship <laughs> as twins, they have a lot of stories to tell. We used to both swim in high school and it was really to prepare for this job. We work around water. So being a proficient swimmer is something really important. And I remember we had our, it was a championship meet, and I, you know where this is going. And I, we had to go to practice for, it was in the summer, and you had to go to practice for two weeks, and I wasn't gonna do this without my brother. So uh -huh. I was like, I think I'm gonna have to swim for you to get you that time. <laughs> so I dragged him along with me, so he had to go to these swim practices, because I, we just do everything together. And so he ended up swimming for me for the qualifying meet, and no one ever said a no thing. One ever what? <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. 
first time admitting this. Now their journey has led them here. Jacob works with the orcas and Weston works with the beluga whales and the dolphins. And to those who may want to follow in their footsteps, their message is simple. They say, follow your heart, dream big, and do what makes you truly happy. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And special thanks to our executive producer, Joy Presley, for helping put all that together. A little later this morning, we'll show you the way the trainers entertain some of the animals. It's all ahead on GMSA at 9. That's right. Coming up right now, 611, about 72 degrees. And still to come, Apple is now offering training to become an IT professional. We're going to explain how that works. But first, the trip of a lifetime. Local veterans being honored for their valor and service with one of those honor flights. Jonathan Coto is standing by at San Antonio International Airport with more on that story. And taking a look outside with live cam, 72 degrees to start your morning at 611. And we've had a very, very hot week, but we're looking forward to changes this weekend. We'll be checking in with Justin very soon. Welcome back. Happening now, some of our bravest military heroes are gearing up to make their way to our nation's capital. This is all part of an honor flight that includes veterans from World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live from San Antonio International Airport with more. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Let me tell you what an honor and privilege it is to be here this morning among 20 of our country's finest and bravest men who will be boarding a plane here shortly to Washington, D.C. to visit the memorials dedicated to them. I had an opportunity to speak with several of them, several of them saying that this is going to be their first time visiting the East Coast. This is going to be their first time going to those memorials. Let's take a listen. I think it's going to be a hell of a trip, to tell you the truth. I mean, you know, I've never been in that part of the country. All the West, I do Colorado, Wyoming, you know, camped all over that place. But I never went to the East Coast. And I've always did want to go see those monuments, you know. But. Now, again, 20 veterans are along with their special escorts are crew bound for Washington, D.C. Let me tell you about who's here right now. We have three World War II veterans, five Korean War veterans, and 12 Vietnam veterans. Among them, we have a 97-year-old, the oldest, and the youngest, a 72-and-a-half, a 72-year-old, and, and we have five Purple Heart recipients. Now, again, this is part of Honor Flight's effort to uh, have those veterans go visit those memorials designated for them, those that are willing and able to do so. Of course, we wish them um, safe travels, and of course, a huge thanks for serving our country. Back to you. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jonathan Cota, live out at San Antonio International Airport. And time now, 616, time to check back with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Let's get a look. U.S. 90 at Couples. Things seem to be moving just fine. But let's get that wider look at Transguide 281 at the Loop 410. You can see just it looks like it's getting a little bit busier around town. Now, earlier we did have an unfortunate incident there off 35 at Salado Creek where we did have that deadly crash. Now, the good news is that scene has since cleared, but we're going to work to bring you details on that particular incident as the morning does go on. But thankfully, elsewhere around town, things are are moving just fine. Now let's go in and get that wide look at the map and show you how things are shaping up at 617. Bringing you in here, we're first going to start near Von Army, where we do have a stalled vehicle reported at I-35 northbound, not causing any issues for drivers, but at this hour that seems to be the trend as we take a drive over here to Loop 410 westbound there at Somerset Road. So again, check those vehicles, make sure you watch out for those emergency lights that are out there, move over or slow down, and also make sure you plan your commute because we do have some traffic signal work that's taking place off Loop 1604 over near the north central side of San Antonio. Keep in mind that is current and should be wrapping up tomorrow, but it will start at nine in the morning and wrap up around three in the afternoon. Drivers during that time, you can expect the east to westbound turnaround closures there at loop 1604 and Northwest Military Highway. So it's about that time. Grab your phones and open your camera app. Scan that QR code. That's going to take you directly to the case at traffic page. And of course, that will have that updated list of closures in your area and anything else that could be impacting your drive time. Guys. Thank you, Mr. Cavazos. Another hot day, triple digits? Probably, probably, probably <laughs> we'll be right there. Uh, as we've been saying all morning, though, there there is some light at the end of the tunnel, whatever proverbial phrase you want to use. We're going to see some relief, but we've got to wait a couple more days here. And just to put this May heat into perspective, it really has been incredible. Uh, in 2021, all of 2021, we had three days of triple digit heat. Those all came in September. 
So far this year, four days of triple digit heat all in May. If you're curious, we average about 18 triple digit days per year. Uh, so we're, I'd say, a little bit ahead of schedule here. May has been uh, just incredibly hot. But I think the back end of May is going to look a lot better than the first half. We look at the rain chances that are coming our way. None today, but as we get into tomorrow, and this is mainly tomorrow evening, 30% chance of some storms. Saturday evening, same story. Sunday with a front, we'll see some showers and storms, and then we're going to pick up the rain chances a little bit to start next week. And hopefully, there's some good rainfall totals around the area. I think that's a possibility. Here's the scene outside. We've got mostly cloudy skies, 73 degrees at the airport, dew point is at 67, and a good southerly breeze this morning, anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. 69 in Kerrville, 69 Fredericksburg, but everyone else sitting in the 70s at this hour. 72 Randolph, 76 down there at Stinson at 70 in Divine. Uh, temperatures today warm up quickly. Uh, we'll be close to 90 at noontime, and then we should top out close to 100 here in San Antonio. So yes, triple digits are back in the forecast, and if you're keeping tabs at home, the record today is 101. So we may come up just shy. We may, we may get there. If we did, it would be the sixth day in a row, which would be pretty incredible. Uh, six day in a row of record high temperatures. Uh, you see all the triple digits that will be around the area today. There are a few showers up around Dallas this morning. Other than that, it's a pretty quiet start for most of Texas, and it's not just us that's seeing the heat. It'll be statewide, some big time temperatures all across the Lone Star State. Here's what we have to look forward to. At least this is the first of several disturbances that head our way. This one happens to be over parts of uh, California and Arizona right now. It works its way towards Texas tomorrow. And the path of this system takes it right over top of us. So that's why I'm at least hopeful that we can get some storms going. Now here's the caveat. We are going to have a cap on the atmosphere tomorrow, a lid on the atmosphere. If that doesn't break, we're not going to see anything at all. But I'm hoping this system that's coming in will be enough uh, to break that lid and then we'll get some storms going. This is 7 o'clock uh, this evening. Nothing there. I think today stays quiet. We get clouds tomorrow morning and then by tomorrow afternoon, this model does show some isolated showers and storms popping up. If we see some storms, there's a risk for severe weather and hail and gusty ones would be the main threats. Right now it's just isolated, so it's, it's low end uh, because I think uh, there's not gonna be a ton of coverage here, but the, be on the lookout tomorrow evening for some of those storms. We'll let you know in the KSAT weather app if anything does pop up. I know a lot of folks have uh, Friday evening plans. Also, if you're planning out your weekend, know that it will be hot on Saturday. We're thinking upper 90s, yes, but a front comes through Sunday morning, and boy, that brings some big time changes. Highs only in the 80s on Sunday with more rain chances, and as we showed you, rain chances going into next week. So here it is all together on the seven day forecast 97 tomorrow, 98 Saturday, but 82 on Sunday, and 80s most of next week with those rain chances hanging around, especially early next week. What a refreshing forecast. Beautiful. All cool. right. Love the 80s. Yes. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. With both. OK, <laughs> 622, 72 degrees. And still ahead, the next time someone calls for IT, why you could be the one responding thanks to Apple. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with Rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with Rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with Rebelsis. A1C, down with Rebelsis. In a clinical study, once daily Rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may and kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down with Ask your health care provider about Rebelsis today. 625 Netflix losing more of its long-term subscribers. Data shows that subscribers who have been with the service more than three years accounted for 13% of cancellations in the first quarter of 2022. And overall, cancellations have jumped to 3.6 million. 
Amazon is out with a new version of its Fire 7 tablet. The company says it comes with battery life that's 40% longer and USB-C charging. It comes in black, denim, and rose, and it costs about 60 bucks. It'll begin shipping in June. Apple is now offering training to become an IT professional. The company says completing the two courses should take uh, 27 hours. There's also a certification exam. Participants will learn how to deploy, manage, and support Apple devices in the workplace. And time now, 626 and 72 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, an early morning death on Interstate 35 near Splashtown has San Antonio police officers investigating what we know so far coming up. And a quick look at the roads with Transguy looking there at Loop 410 at Marbuck Road where things are moving on that camera. And I-10 at Presa will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos again very soon. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto here at the San Antonio International Airport. 20 veterans are Washington, D.C. bound. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you who they are and why they're going. If you're craving slightly cooler temperatures and some rain, hang on a little bit longer. Justin's forecast continues to materialize and it is looking good on all fronts right now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it is Thursday, May 19th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. And yes, we're going to get hot again today, but I'm looking forward to next week already. Oh, we sure are. When could we start to see the changes begin, Justin? I think you'll notice temperatures coming down Sunday. So Sunday is the day for temperatures. But in the meantime, we do have a couple chances for rain coming up Friday and Saturday. So we have some opportunities here. Things are changing a little bit today. Yeah, we're right back where we have been. 100 degrees. The forecast side, the record is 101. So we'll be right there within a record again. We've had so many records last several days. But the temperatures across the state today are just uh, nothing short of impressive. Forecast side in San Angelo, 107. Abilene, 108. There's going to be a lot of triple digits and a lot of records going down across the state of Texas today. So we're still within the heat. Triple digits in the forecast this afternoon for us, but by tomorrow there will be some evening storms and a few of those could be strong to severe as we get into the weekend frontal boundaries we mentioned on Sunday and this brings about some some good changes. You're going to love the temperatures Sunday and into next week. We also have some chances of rain mixed in there. Temperatures this morning, 68 Rock Springs, 70 Uvalde, 73 Pleasanton, 73 at the airport, 70 right now in Holotus. So a, a decent start, a comfortable start. But boy, once that sun comes up, these temperatures really race upwards. 81 degrees, 10 o'clock. By noontime, 88 degrees, 95 by 2 p.m. And you should be right around 100 this afternoon with those southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We're going to get into all those rain chances. We're going to talk about the good news coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Stephen now and see how that morning commute is going. Hopefully some good news there, too. Yeah, people are moving this morning. Justin, let's get a look right now. I-10 at Presa. You can see the difference now. It's just more folks waking up with us and getting their day started. So getting out on the roads in the next few moments, let's take a look at what you can expect right there on our map. So some of the same issues as we bring you in here, we have that stalled vehicle right there off of I-35 northbound at Von Ormy. Been there for a little while, but it's not alone. Let's take a drive over here to Loop 410 in the westbound lanes there near Somerset, where we do have another vehicle that was reportedly having some trouble out there. So as a reminder, make sure to check your vehicles before you get your day started. Heading to the Alamo City from any of these communities, you're in luck. Just about green across the board, with the exception of our friends up in Bulverde. The usual slowdown, a 28-minute drive time to downtown. Now let's get one last look around town. 410 at North at Ingram. You can see not really spotting a lot of problems, but if you've been with us, we've been talking about a deadly crash near 35 near Ben Zingelman. Katrina Weber live there now with the latest details. Well, good morning, Stephen. Uh, yeah, police have wrapped up their investigation of the crash and they have reopened the access road, which is where the crash was. Now, right now, traffic wise, not a lot to see here, uh, but that hasn't been the case all morning long. And we have some video to show you. This goes back to about 2.15 this morning. That's when the crash happened. Police say that a woman in a car for some reason drove off the northbound lanes of I-35 and landed in a ditch. Uh, they had to shut down the access road while they investigated that crash. We still don't know what caused that woman to drive off the highway, but she was killed in the crash. And again, that investigation lasted for the better part of four hours with the access road here just reopening about a half hour ago. And right now uh, it looks as though it is just another normal uh, morning commute because that the road is clear, but the crash still under investigation. Reporting live on the Northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Trina, thank you. A call for change after a troublesome trend. In little more than a week, San Antonio has seen three teens shot. Two of those cases were deadly, including a 15-year-old named Ethan Soto. Yesterday afternoon, a third teen was shot on the city's east side and rushed to the hospital. Sarah Costa joins us live now. And Sarah, this all comes as District 2's councilman prepares for a crime prevention summit. That's right, Steph and Mark. That summit is set to take place next week after these horrific teen shootings. Here's what we know about the latest shooting that happened yesterday afternoon. Police first responded to the corner of Aransas and Cardiff for a shooting just before 1.30 yesterday afternoon. They later found the victim, a teen girl, a few blocks away near Martin Luther King Drive and I-10 on the city's east side. She was able to get help at a bar. She was taken to the hospital. It's issues like these that District 2 Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez is hoping to discuss during next week's Crime Prevention Summit. Brandon Johnson has been living on the city's east side for about 40 years. He says he heard those gunshots during yesterday afternoon shooting. How often do you think you hear shootings on this part of town? A lot, a lot, like every night, a lot, a lot. It's oh. getting, it got out of, got out of control. Well, Councilman Jalen McKee Rodriguez plans to address residents' questions and concerns on May 27th at Second Baptist Church from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Now, there is a questionnaire on District 2 Council's Facebook page where residents can send in their thoughts. And we're going to have that link for you on ksat.com. Now, the teen involved in yesterday's shooting, she's going to be okay. Police say she was shot in the leg. They continue to search for the suspect that got away in a black vehicle. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much. Today, some of our bravest military heroes gearing up to make their way over to our nation's capitals. All part of the honor flight includes veterans from World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. All right, Jonathan Goto joins us live from San Antonio International Airport with the very latest. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. Let me tell you, it's been an absolute honor and privilege to be here at the San Antonio International Airport this morning with the sounds of bagpipes making our way down to this terminal. It's been an absolute sight as you can see these brave men getting ready to board this flight and with me is air force veteran executive board member to san antonio's honor flight court van slicker how are you sir i'm fine thanks how are you doing well now sir talk to us a little bit we have 20 veterans from different generations um talk to us about this flight this flight we're honored to have uh, three world war ii five korean uh war and 12 vietnam war of the 12 Vietnam, we have five Purple Heart recipients traveling with us. Now, Court, this is a pretty big deal. I was speaking with some of the veterans here. Some of them have never been to the East Coast, much less Washington, D.C., to visit these memorials that are essentially designated for them. Well, some for some vets, this is, a, this is their first airplane ride. Uh, we have one veteran who's traveling with us, and he's our World War, one of our World War II vets. He was a radio operator and gunner, but he doesn't like to fly on an aircraft. So it, that was interesting conversation. But it's, it's interesting. The youngest we have is 72, and the oldest that's traveling with us is 97, and we will be 98 next week. Wow. Now, Court, now these veterans are not traveling alone. They have with them their escorts, what we call gu guardians, correct? Talk to us a little bit about that program and how folks can get involved. Well, Honor Flight San Antonio is, is we're, we're always looking for veterans. Uh, World War II and Korea have priority. Any veteran who has a terminal illness from any conflict uh, is going to move right up to the top. Uh, and then we take our, our, right now we have 220 Vietnam vets on our waiting list. Uh, the more flights we can take, and right now we're taking two. But as far as the Guardians go, they, like the veterans, can go to our website, which is www.honorflightsanantonio.org. Uh, click on the apply tab and then to follow the instructions for a, a veteran, guardian or a volunteer. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning, Court. We wish you safe travels and thank you for your service. And thank you to these 20 incredible men for their service as well. Yep, we're honored to have them with us and, and we're looking forward to the rest of the trip. It'll be very busy and a lot of fun. There you have it, Mark and Stephanie. This flight is on time, so we wish this men, these men a safe, a safe trip, and we will be seeing them back on the tarmac come this weekend, this Saturday. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much. Right now, 638, about 72 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And parents worry about their kids' screen time use, but should they worry more about their own? After the break, why choosing to look at your phone instead of your children could have lasting effects.
Good morning. Welcome back. 642 lawmakers finally addressing the critical shortage of baby formula. President Biden now invoking the De Defense Production Act. However, it could still be weeks before parents see relief. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. This morning, the House of Representatives taking new action to address the baby formula shortage, approving a bill last night that would allow more formula to be purchased with money from a federal program for low-income families. The House also approved a measure to spend $28 million to help the FDA increase formula supply. They can move quickly. We can get product here rapidly. And again, it should come from FDA approved facilities. It's not about politics. Both bills now head to the Senate, but President Biden taking a more immediate step, now invoking the Defense Production Act to boost production. The Defense Production Act gives the government the ability to require suppliers to direct needed resources to infant formula manufacturers before any other customer who may have ordered that good. It comes as lawmakers launch an investigation into the tax practices at formula maker Abbott Labs. The shortage is partially blamed on Abbott's Michigan plant shutting down in February when bacteria was reportedly found at the facility. Now, in a letter to Abbott, the Senate Finance Committee accuses the company of using corporate tax cuts to enrich executives and shareholders. Records show Abbott's profits increased 90 percent since 2019, and the company spent $8 billion in stock buybacks during that period. The Senate committee claiming as Abbott spent billions buying back its own stock, it appears that it failed to make necessary repairs to fix a critical manufacturing plant. Abbott denies the buybacks impact the Michigan formula plant and says it complies with all local and international tax laws and regulations. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. On average, people spend almost five hours a day on their smartphones. That's about a third of the time you're actually awake. When it comes to parenting, that type of distraction can have damaging consequences. Especially if you're behind the wheel driving with your kids. That's just one of the many reasons to hang up that phone. Ursula Perry has more on how you can become a more present parent. You see them everywhere you go. Distracted parents with cell phones in their hands. Research is showing there's plenty of downsides when it comes to using your phone too much around your kids. So I'm interpreting it as I'm less important. I don't matter. I don't count. A study out of Boston Medical Center found one in three parents use portable technology without pause while dining with their children. Other research has shown toddlers don't learn as well when parents are distracted by their screens. And parents who allow phones to interrupt family interactions are more likely to have children with behavior problems. But there's one simple thing parents can do. If you have to check an email and your child comes up to you and says, hey mommy, hey mommy, or hey daddy, like pause and provide them that that uninterrupted time, even if it's just 30 seconds. Set some ground rules. Put your phone out of sight during specific times of the day, like dinner and bedtime. Turn off any notifications that might tempt you to look at the phone more often and remove any distracting apps you don't need. What's really going to be most important for kids is they recognize that they count or that they matter to you as your parent more so than that device in your hand. And if you're not a believer, listen to this. Recent studies have shown that there is definitely a correlation between playground injuries and the increase in cell phone use. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 645. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yes, and no texting and driving, please. Uh, we want you to be focused on the roads and stay alert. Let's go ahead and get a look at the roadways right now. 410 at Starcrest. You can see traffic is moving. We are now in morning rush, but just remind yourselves, no need to rush out the door. Give yourself plenty of time because the only issues we're really spotting right now is our just stalled vehicles. We'll have a new one that we're adding to our list right there off of 410 near Northwest Military Highway. It's in the westbound lanes of the loop, so just make sure to stay focused. And as we take a drive down here, we still see this stalled vehicle at Loop 410 westbound at Somerset Road. So that has been the trending problem throughout the morning. But one last drive around town, 35 at Salado Creek looks nice and quiet so far. But Justin, it is sure hot outside. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yesterday marked five days in a row of record high temperatures. And we may get back there again today. If we can make it six in a row, that would be nothing short of incredible and not in a good way. Okay, the month of May has just been brutally hot. 8.4 degrees above average. Uh, we've spent a couple of days at 101. And the forecast is for it to stay above average through Saturday. But 
As we get into Sunday and Monday, forecast calls for below average temperatures and rain chances, and it looks a lot better. There's the scene outside right now. We've got mostly cloudy skies, 73 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 67. Southerly winds at about 14 miles per hour, and we've spent most of the morning in the low 70s here around San Antonio. 73 at the airport, 73 Castroville, some 60s in the higher elevations like Bandera and up towards Kerrville. The case at 12 hour forecast 77 9 o'clock will start to lose those clouds pretty quickly. Noontime 88 95 by 2 o'clock and you're up to 100 for your high temperature today, which will likely occur sometime around 5 o'clock or so. Those winds stay breezy throughout the afternoon. Here's the picture, the big picture across uh, Texas. We've got some showers up around Dallas. These extend up towards Oklahoma, but other than that, it is a quiet start in the state and we're going to see some brutally high temperatures not only here, but across a large portion of Texas today. Here's what we're watching. We've got a little twist in the atmosphere. This is what we showed you yesterday on, on water vapor. It is going to work its way towards Texas and this is the first of several disturbances that move in our direction and give us some rain chances. So let's look at the computer models here. This is today and there's not much to show you this evening. I think we stay fairly quiet, but tomorrow as that uh, little system moves in, we'll get some clouds in the morning and then by the afternoon, some isolated showers and storms potentially. Tomorrow is one of those days where it's kind of all or nothing. We have a, a lid on the atmosphere cap. So if that can break, if the system's enough to break that cap, then we'll get some storms and we'll likely get some severe weather. If the cap doesn't break, we won't see anything at all. So just keep that in mind. It's about a 30% chance of some storms tomorrow. And there is a risk for some severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has us in the low end risk, isolated chance for some severe weather. Hail, gusty winds being the main threats. We'll keep you posted tomorrow and uh, we'll have some more chances, I think, for some stronger storms as we go through uh, the course of the next seven days or so, probably into next week. But it'll be sort of a day to day thing. This weekend, if you're making plans, Saturday, there is a chance for storms late. It'll still be hot, 98 degrees, but Sunday, we're into the 80s. Cold front comes through, cools us down, brings some rain chances with it too, so it's all good. Sunday into Monday, you'll notice uh, the difference in temperatures. In the meantime, again, 100 today, 97 Friday, 98 uh, coming up Saturday, and then cooler on Sunday. Next week, we've got highs in the 80s and more rain chances. In fact, we've brought rain chances up to 40% both Monday and Tuesday. So a good looking seven day forecast compared to what we have been seeing. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. It looks yeah. really, really good. Hope all this comes to pass. Yes, me too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll take it. Time now, 649 and 72 degrees for now. Worried about being tracked online and even outside your home tomorrow, you may some, some 30 second fixes that can protect your privacy. And we want to wish a happy birthday to Amanda Sanchez. She's 40 years old today. Happy birthday. You can submit your pictures online at kset.com slash birthdays. Please include the name and age. Happy birthday outside with live cam on your Thursday morning, moving right along in our work week. Traffic moving right there at 410. We'll check back in with Stephen right around the corner. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the big steps from President Biden to speed up the production of baby formula when it could finally help ease the nationwide shortage. Plus, a new FTC warning this morning about baby formula scammers. They're charging desperate parents sky high prices for formula that never arrives. Also, the turbulence on Wall Street, stocks plunging. What is behind that and what it means for your wallet? That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Well, before you go this morning, some of our military heroes are gearing up to make their way to the nation's capital this morning. It's all part of one of those honor flights. It includes veterans from uh, World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam War. San Antonio International Airport right, is, is the gathering place for these veterans for a trip of a lifetime. Our Jonathan Cotto has been out there all morning long. They should be departing soon, and Godspeed. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank you for your service. Time now, 654, and I saw flashing lights out there at Highway 281 in St. Mm -hmm. Mary's. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, we couldn't end the show on a great note here, guys. 281 there at St. Mary's. Let's get a quite wider look at Trends Guide. We see plenty of flashing lights out there. This crash popped up during the commercial break, and you can see during this time, we're going to see some issues. So let's go ahead and take you right to the map there because we're seeing that reported in the northbound lanes there near St. Mary Street. Now you can see no big slowdowns just yet, but as we get a wide look at also these travel times, we're just about green across the board, but for our friends up in Bulverde, 
30 minutes to the downtown area, but an area that we're going to have to watch closely here at St. Mary Street. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin Horn for that forecast. Thanks, sir. We've got temperatures in the 70s right now. We'll warm up into the upper 80s by noontime. 100, the forecast side today, which would be just shy of the record, but we may get there. Uh, we've set several records in a row here. Southerly winds at uh, southerly winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour today. The extended forecast, we're going to go uh, 97 tomorrow, 98 on Saturday. There are some chances for storms coming up tomorrow evening that we'll be watching the risk for some severe weather. Then again, on Saturday, we could see a few more storms. Frontal boundary on Sunday means some relief, which cools us down into the 80s. More chances of rain and perhaps our best chance showing up Monday and Tuesday, where we could see some decent downpours. So this is all looking better and better as uh, we get closer to the weekend. In the meantime, we are going to still have to deal with this heat and what a May it has been so far. So uh, over the next four or five days, what do you think our risk level for severe weather is? Tomorrow, I think it's, it's fairly significant if we see storms. That's the key, okay. whether or not we get those storms actually to develop. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll get the nice rain. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, thank I you, agree. Justin. Steven, Justin, thank you guys. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you back here at 9. GMA is next.